We are grateful to you, Grand Admiral. And to you, Morgan Elspeth. She who heard our dreams across the stars. Come forward. You shall be rewarded. The gift of shadows. The blade of Talsen. Take it, sister. The Jedi are advancing swiftly. We require a little more time. I understand. For the Empire. For Daphne. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. destruction, destruction, destruction. The Force has a dark and a light side. That's black magic and white magic. The doorway into the occult is an altered state of consciousness. Over. That's an altered state of consciousness. Yoda is a yogi. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You'd rather reprove them. Ahsoka means love and light. Welcome to Conspiracy in the Force, Season 3, Star Wars and the New Age Deception. With me, Conspiracy Kyle. Manifest by the light. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Welcome back to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force, which may in fact be my final episode of this podcast. I'm Conspiracy Kyle. Now, I know I've said that before, but honestly, I think I mean it this time, but time will tell. Today, we'll be discussing the season finale of Ahsoka, titled The Jedi, The Witch, and The Warlord, which is an obvious takeoff of C.S. Lewis's classic book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Now, honestly, this show has been hit or miss for me, a bit of a mixed bag. One of the most concerning things to me has been the prevalence of the witchcraft narrative in the show, which we've covered on several episodes previously. As the season is now wrapped up, I see an even bigger deception being brought to light, and it's yet another biblical inversion going on in the show. Now, for those who aren't aware or may not have noticed it, there's this running theme of Gnosticism in Hollywood productions over time. Gnosticism, to boil it down to a 30-second elevator pitch, is basically a bastardized version of Christianity that combined pagan philosophies and sprouted out famously in the first century after Jesus' death. One of the main tenets of Gnosticism is the concept of the Demiurge, or the Creator God, who created this evil world that we live in. In many movies and TV shows, you see Gnostic beliefs brought in. Many villains in media are depicted as a godlike evil figure like Thanos from the Avengers, the aliens from the Matrix movie, or even the character Kristoff from the Truman Show, which you'll notice from the spelling that it is spelled C-H-R-I-S-T. Very deliberate. 
These characters are depicted as evil and hell-bent on their own fame and glory at the cost of others. People believe this is how God truly is, which nothing can be further from the truth. Sure, God brings judgment on evildoers both in this life and in eternity, but he also showed his love and compassion for all of us by sending his son Jesus to die as a sacrifice so that we may live in eternity with him one day. He also shows us grace and mercy each and every day by not inflicting the punishment we all deserve for every sin we commit. Now on the flip side, on the hero side of all of these shows, you see that the humans all band together. The group of heroes, the rebels, all team together to defeat the villain, a la the New Age concept of humans being their own gods. Anyways, back to the show. While I don't necessarily see the evil god narrative here in Ahsoka, I do see another perversion of biblical events described in the Old Testament. In Ahsoka, Thrawn and the great mothers of Dathomir have been stranded in another galaxy for many years. Thrawn convinces the great mothers to arise and work together with him to find their way back to their homeworld in the main galaxy. To me, this seems to present the inversion of Moses freeing the Israelites from their captivity in Egypt and making the exodus through the desert back to the foretold promised land. Here, the heroes Ahsoka and Sabine, like Pharaoh and his troops, are stopped from pursuing in the Bible, it's by the crashing waters of the Red Sea. In the Ahsoka series, it's by the seismic energy emitted by the hyperspace ring when Thrawn departs the galaxy. It's also interesting to note that the term Zion is a term used for Jerusalem or the land of Israel as a whole. How ironically on the nose is it that the hyperspace ring used to pull Thrawn and the Great Mothers to their home world is called the Eye of Sion with an S instead of a Z? Coincidence? I think not. I think not. I think not. Another perversion is the symbolism of the sword gifted by the mothers to Elspeth. This sword called the Sword of Talzin, which is a reference to the clan leader Mother Talzin during the Clone Wars era, was a flaming sword given to Elspeth after she is fully initiated into the Witch Coven and given the gift of shadows. shadows. Now, the symbolism of a fiery sword appears one time specifically in the Bible, in the beginning. In Genesis, in those first chapters, the passages that we all know, Adam and Eve eat from the tree against God's commandment and are forbidden from remaining in the garden. Here's Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims in a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So the inversion here is that Morgan Elsbeth uses this flaming sword to distract and block the way for Ahsoka and her friends to get aboard Thrawn's ship so they can't get to the Eye of Sion, to the Promised Land. She's in essence a cherubim, an angelic guardian of paradise, though in reality she's just an evil witch seeking to kill and destroy all who oppose her and her way of life. The inversion is real. It's real. And finally, the most disturbing biblical inversion was in the pledge Morgan had to repeat in order to gain her sisterhood into this witch cult. Here's the full clip from the episode. Do you pledge yourself to the sisterhood, to the magics, to the old ways? I do. Do you abandon your old life for this new one? I do. Your loyalty? Your life? My loyalty. My life. Now in our world, people say it's silly and embarrassingly stupid to die for believing in Christ or to dedicate your life to Christ. But here, among the sci-fi fantasy crowd, these same anti-Christian people will hem and haw over how cool it is that someone is being initiated into this witchcraft ascendancy, which ironically uses very similar wording to describe someone giving their life over to Christ. Words such as abandoning your old life, pledging loyalty, 
in following in the ways, in life and in death. And we see later in this episode that Morgan does sacrifice her own life for this cause that she swore to. This perverted salvation narrative could give people a warped view of what becoming a Christian really is. Saying a prayer to become some crazy cult member. It's the same way in which Jesus and God the Father have been lampooned and parodied in popular media to water down their holiness. Romans 1 verse 25 says of the wicked in this world that they have changed the truth of God into a lie. And then in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8, this warns of those who would take you captive by philosophy and vain deceit according to human tradition. And further, 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 state that in the last days there will be scoffers walking after their own desires. And to paraphrase, saying God is a liar. One of my biggest takeaways from this season is the narrative of making witchcraft cool again. An unexpected departure from what I expected to be a pretty New Age-centric season, with the Jedi teachings taking center stage. These seem to have been pushed aside for occult imagery, incantations, and mother goddess worship. I won't be surprised if a large number of cosplayers at future Star Wars conventions are now going to be embracing this Dathomir witch attire. But it's all just in good fun, right? Yeah, sure. Well, that does it for this episode in the Ahsoka first season, and perhaps even this podcast as a whole. You know, I've been going back and forth about ending this podcast for some time, but I always end up coming back to do more. I also considered ditching all my social media recently, but decided against that too. So never say never. Now I may be back soon with some visual Star Wars content on my YouTube, Rumble, and other streaming sites. I have some ideas I've been kicking around about combining content from some of these podcast shows into long-form content, such as in documentary or something like that, but I don't know yet. I may also be working on more music on my The Prodigal One music page. All I know is that whatever happens, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this show, and I've met so many wonderful people that I can proudly call friends through this podcast. I would encourage anybody that's listening to this to look into the Bible and to follow God with your whole life. Now, early on in my podcast, I focused mostly on strictly conspiratorial items, but recently God has put it on my heart and mind to speak more boldly and proudly about what I believe. I think this hurt the overall numbers and downloads of the show, but I'm appreciative to those who have stuck around and are still listening and have listened from the start. The hardest thing about doing a podcast is not being 100% sure if people are getting anything out of it or if they're even listening after downloading the episodes. So I hope that the show has been informative for you, and I trust that this silly little Star Wars premise that I came up with could cause you to think more about the things above, the things of God. That's my main goal. For Conspiracy in the Force, this is Conspiracy Kyle, signing off. God bless, and take care.